Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam Show. It's Adam and Steve. Hello. Hey, Steve. What's going on, brother? Hey, Adam. Not much, Happy buddy, New Year. yourself? Yes. Happy 2023. 2023. We're wow. midway through season four. Four? <laughs> Chugging along. I don't know. Yeah. It's a lot of things. Try. Uh, Steve, hey, what are we talking about today? Uh, compliance. Uh, like auditors and stuff? Sort of. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, compliance scripts for compliance policies to make sure your device is secure when you're connecting to conditional access or to your corporate uh, network. Well, that sounds so, like a plan. Yeah, this is some pretty cool stuff. So obviously there's the native uh, compliance policies there today where you can go in there and set up to say device needs to be encrypted, it needs to have everything associated. But what was added last year was the ability to provide a uh, PowerShell script. That's a custom script to be able to sit there and say, is the device compliant, including these custom parameters? So it's extending upon what's Microsoft provided natively. Cool. So before we jump in, um... If it's in an environment where you're using um, co-management and you've got yes. config manager enabled, um, yes. there's an option. There has always been an option as far as I know um, uh, that allows you on individual configuration <laughs> items or baseline. I think it's on the baseline itself. Um, baseline. When you're deploying the baseline, there's a checkbox that says uh, always include this in uh, your compliance processing. So that Correct. is just compliance within Config Manager. However, yep. Intune also has an option to use Config Manager compliance data as well to com to, cal Correct. to help calculate your compliance of a device. So we've already kind of had that functionality for folks that are using Config Manager and code management. If you had leveraged that, you've been able to do custom things up to this point. So now this gives you yet another reason you don't necessarily have to do the on-prem stuff. You can move this stuff directly right. into the cloud and let Straight it. Straight to the cloud for the win. Sounds good. Well, cool. where do we want to start? Um, let's start in the portal. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick refresher on the compliance policy itself. Uh, so Whoopsie. we'll get you to select the right tab. Yep. Um, from here, we're going to go to devices. And then we're going to go to Windows because we're just going to make it a little bit easier to see everything. Uh, and then from there, we're going to select compliance policies. And you should always have a policy here at least uh, because this is how you ensure your devices are compliant. Uh, we're going to just use our existing one because it's easier. Uh, if we click on that one for us and we go to properties, uh, and then we're going to hit the edit compliance setting show. So there's a couple of things I'm just going to call out here that are really important to understand how the environment works. So what we're going to be using is the first one, which is the custom compliance, but we haven't got a file set up at the moment, so we're not going to be able to set anything up, but we're going to come back to that one. Um, under device health, if you expand that one out for me, Adam, See how this one's saying it's the Windows Health Attestation Service Evaluation Rules and the require BitLocker. So you as an IT admin, Adam, you'd assume you just go, well, yeah, I want to require a uh, BitLocker, right? Yeah, I've, I've clicked that button. But it didn't work, did it? All your devices what? came back as not configured. Uh, probably, yes, yes, yes. So I think oh, I've turned sorry, that one off. So, so non-compliant. So the reason for that is you need, if you were to use this feature, which is uh, it, you can, but you need to have a Windows Health attestation server in your environment that can attest to the fact that the device is encrypted, has secure boot, and has remote code integrity enabled. Oh, Most organizations don't have that set up. So don't use that feature. So what we're going to do is go so through. so hang on so so if I enable that and I don't have that service enabled in environment, um, what we're saying here is that non compliant. But so there's no logic in there that says hey, um, 
you don't have this enabling in your environment, don't use the setting. It, it's, it's unaware of, of that. Correct. It is unaware okay. of that. So that's why I'm calling it out. Good, good call super, out. Super important to understand. But if I you go to device something. properties, what we have here is OS versions. This is actually pretty cool. Um, what you have in this scenario is you can sit there with your maximum and minimum OS and use the um, four dot don't known uh, notation. And you can sit there and go, I'm only going to support 10.0 dot the major release number being like uh, 22,000, which is Windows 11. And then mm -hmm. you can put the dot value of the cumulative update for last month's update. If that, yeah. if you don't have that installed, you don't get access to the corporate resources. Well, and as a, just as a refresher on that, I know we'll here in a minute, Inverter. just uh no, no, no. Um, or not specifically the, uh, um, the impact of the compliance policy. I right. thinking this device should still be non-compliant. Uh, Maybe let's hope so. So see a nice little notification here. Oh, we can't access company resources. And so if now you're, because if you haven't applied that policy, right? So if you fail any of these, uh, any, any of the, um, compliance policies, uh, you then would get this notice and say, Hey, you can't get to things. So correct. that's pretty cool. All right. Um, so yeah, that's your OS version. So here's the config manager compliance, and that's where you can pull that information from, um, Config manager, the nice part in this scenario is it does the processing to go, if it's only in tune only, it's just going to go, don't apply this policy. Genius. The, yeah. Device if only they could do that in do the that. device health. <laughs> right. You're not going to go down that path. No, so no, no, no. The system no. security. Typically, this is associated with mobile devices, not with uh, Windows OS although it does include down the bottom for holographic um, for the password stuff. So that's going to be for your HoloLens. Cool. Uh, under encryption, this is where you specify that you need to have device encrypted rather than using the other BitLocker scenario. Under device security, you have the firewall. So you're saying the firewall must be turned on, TPM must be enabled, AV and any spyware. You'll note that we're not sitting there and saying it must be the Microsoft products. We're sitting just, there and saying just anything that Windows recognizes as those providers it correct. covers. Perfect. Correct. But then we do step into the defender scenario because of course we can do a little bit more around that. And we can sit there and say it has to be uh, enabled. And then you can also sit there and say it's up to date and real time. And this is using the basic, the basic defender built in, not Correct. the advanced defender for endpoint stuff. Yep. And then this is where you can go and do some cool stuff around defender risk profiles mm -hmm. to say your device is below this risk profile. Now, I will tell you, I went down this path. We had this set and I could not for the life of me figure out how to make my machine compliant. And so I just turned it back off because I just could not figure out how in the world those rules were processed. I'm uh, sure somebody's within me and there's even a document that probably tells you how to do it. And I dug around and I just was like, I don't know. I couldn't figure out on my specific machine why I it was think coming that's up. going low. to be a, uh, a conversation that we can have on another call, Adam. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. We'll, 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 um, we'll skip that today because it's yeah, I don't want to go down rabbit hole. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Let's back up here. Uh, All right. So we're going to be playing around with the custom scripts. But why, right now, if you do this, you've got no scripts specified. Wah, wah. So what we need to do is we need to step out of this UX. And one thing I noted just before is we actually need to go back to devices and then scroll down and go to, no, not that devices, this, this section. Uh, and then we go to compliance policies here. You can't go Windows, then compliance policies. You need to go compliance policies. And what you'll see oh, here because is it's scripts. filtered because the node is specifically filtered yep. to Windows. And this is not specific to Windows. This is for all. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Good to know. So then if you select scripts, um, actually, one thing before we do that, and I'm, I'm just going to call this out because it's super important, is under compliance policy settings uh, in here, that first one, 
is if you have no policy applied to the devices or markets compliant. It's a great catch-all, but don't leave it as compliant. You should mark them as non-compliant. By default, I'm pretty sure Microsoft sets that as non-compliant now, but at one point it was setting them as compliant by default. The reason why you want it as non-compliant is because you don't want a catch-all to say, you know what, you're not compliant, but I'm going to let you access company resources anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think I think um, yeah, early on, I think that this was one of those like, hey, this is a way to make sure that you know my machine can get things while it's still kind of churning and bringing down policies after being autopiloted or whatever. That's but that feature. but that's not what that's for. That yep. that opens you, opens the door for yes. things you didn't you somehow managed to not target with your policies, just yep. skate through with nothing. Uh, and instead, well, you set the grace period. Is right. what we're exactly shooting. Right. Let's jump into that grace period quickly because there's a gotcha on that one as well. So if you go to properties uh, and we go, uh, yep, this one here. So by default, we've got non-compliant after 120 days because it's a test environment. Uh, no. I like that one. Look at that one. That's pretty cool. Yes. So there's that retire list. But where is the grace period? Is it more global or is it? Oh, it might be under actions for non-compliance and then change it from mark devices non-compliant. So is there? Huh. There should be a grace period option here. Let's create a new one. Or is it? No, it's are we per sure, Are we sure it's per not? Device. Yeah, it's per device, uh, per policy configuration. I know I've seen it. <laughs> where yeah. where is it? Why are we not strange? Yep. So let's just create our win ten. Yep, yep, yep. Might be on the assignment. Cool. You name a convention. Uh yep. On compliance after. Oh yeah. So maybe must this be is it. Maybe device is not compliant. Yep. Maybe we're so thinking what, we're looking for the words grace well, period, but this is it used to be grace period, but now okay. we think it's been changed. Okay. Um, so what you can do here is see where it's saying it has to be full, uh, has to be days, right? That's fantastic. Except I want it in hours. How do I do it in hours? Oh, well, what I you know. can do is you can do, yeah. You know, so that would be a quarter of a day. Um, so this is a really cool way of getting around that scenario. What you can also do is if you go to actions and hit the drop down for the next one, Adam, uh, we're going to send an email and we're then going to send an email to the end user. And you can also, if you select additional recipients uh, where it says the blue text, uh, you can add uh, an IT support team in there uh, cool. by default. Uh, yeah. And then you can also add your message template there. We, uh, we don't have any right. published, so therefore it's not going to be there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So good. we were looking for the text grace period, but it's it's it now, looks like it's been it's now not changed. Lost. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry to jump back out. Okay. That's um, okay. So if we're going to so do now, the notification, we would come here and we'd create a create a template with some tenant yep. and all the things, and and then you would be able to send us an email. It's pretty cool. Correct. Uh, so let me ask you a question, Steve. Yes, sir. If I'm not allowed to get to company resources, how do I get my email? So that's a very good question. But that's typically during grace period. You can get there or you can get there on another device. So this okay. is where you, need, you as the IT admin need to make sure if you're sending an email to say do action, you need to have a way for your end users to get access to it. Um, that, and how does it know who that, to send that, the email to? Because it's it sends it to user. the user account that's actually authenticating or failing. Okay. Because if we were to look at your device object, you'll see that it's running the compliance policy in your user context. Fair enough. Yes, I thought so. I like uh, it. So, yes. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a super simple script. So if we select scripts there, uh, we are going to go here and we're going to add 
and we've just gone to the public docs. Um, we, we, we've kept it a lot easy and we're just the links down below uh, and you can actually go there and we're going to grab the script that is there because we just went, well, we need to quickly demo something and we could have gone and created something, but we didn't want to. Uh, you guys just type in before you're not missing out. That's right. Okay, so before before we do this, just yep. as a nice uh, test. And we're going to run that command here just to demo it. So we're going to run it as admin. You can run it in the user context. It doesn't really matter. I wasn't um, sure but, if it if it was what it was going to check, so I just figured, hey, let's run it as an NC. Okay, clipboard. Yep. You need to type. Yeah. Oh, it won't it won't take it because I'm running as admin and in, 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 with the hand session, so it won't type. Oh, really? It. it won't type the clipboard. It looks like in into the elevated window. Interesting. I, I mean, that's my guess. Sure, didn't think it wanted to work. I could have gone into no open stuff. Okay. Just got time for that. Exactly. Um, I feel like I could make this screen bigger too. That's okay. Or something. I think you get the idea here. Yep. Yeah. It's a little. It's a little fuzzy. It's not too bad on mine. So let's go big. Come on, man. People are playing. You know we don't like. We don't like those nasty comments. True. And uh, we'll just zoom that in a little bit if we can, Adam. Got you, bro. Perfect. Thank you. And then we're going to paste the script in. As you can see, we're just doing a WMI call and it's going to pull back all of the information about the uh, UEFI or the, the firmware version. I love that we still call it still called BIOS version and not UEFI version. version. <laughs> um, we got the model name and we have TPM chip present is correct so perfect uh, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to create our script there done happy days and this is our detection script i love how uh this is very much the same exact um uh, interface uh entry box that was for um proactive remediations it's the same ui i was thinking it was scripts but sure uh, Either, well, things oh, no, are the same. Pro pro proactive remediation actually has the script box there. It has the, the do you want to run it as and all yep. stuff. Yeah. Right, we're going to create. <clears throat> so we created our script. Uh, I'm sure you'll find that it will be the same scenario. So if we just refresh that one, yep, and click on that for us. Hey, you can actually modify that script, can you? If you hit edit. Yeah. It doesn't hide it from us like all these <laughs> scripts that we put in. That's cool. Take note, folks. If, That's kind of if nice. You answer, just, just, just to prove the point, let's add an extra couple of lines there, Adam. Review yeah. and save. Yeah, buddy. I added some lines. How cool is that? Like it. Too bad we can't use it anywhere else. Uh, <laughs> so if we go compliance policies, now if we go to our, uh, our policy, so Win Team Compliance, we go to properties, and we go edit. Then we go here, we go require, and then what we need to do is we select our super simple script. And then this is the fun part. We now need to upload the JSON result. Oh, I'm so glad I ran this over here. Let's go and copy yep. it. Come on, do something. What's up PowerShell? Why are we doing this? I went too big. Couldn't handle it. Scrolled off the screen. <laughs> All right. So I need to go just make a JSON file. Yep. So just notepad. Yeah, that sounds good. Why? Why are we doing this? We didn't like that, did it? No. Nope. No. You, oh, here, there. I, I, that's why I lost it because it did not. Yep, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm really going the wrong way about this. 
It's okay, Adam. I'm good with it. I didn't know what I was going to have to do here. I would have prepared better. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So there's our JSON. Uh, Oh, I think we got that wrong, wrong, Adam. Custom compliance settings. No, we don't upload a sample of it. We have to upload what the value need to equal. We should probably go and read this document. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There you go. The following is the example output. Uh, okay. So then add it. No, you too home could go do this and follow this document and do better Jason, than what we're doing, system. probably. Um, it doesn't. Oh, here you go. It, if we go to this link here, like create JSON for custom it. compliance. There we go. Yep. Oh, we not do this yet, but fortunately, yep, so it's it already written for us. Yep. Oh man, I'm very disinterested now. This is a lot of extra steps to make a custom policy. Man, dang. Can you just delete and edit it there, or do you mm -hmm. have to upload it? I think we have to upload it again. So that's weird. You had this nice interface for the other one, and and here we have to go and <laughs> upload a file. It's just a block of text. I, Kind of confused by that whole deal. Hey, but it liked it. Look yep. at that. There we go. So the interesting thing here is uh, in the demo, it's sitting there and saying it needs to be an inspiro. So we won't we don't have an inspiro, so we will fail. Yeah. I love how it just takes being. You coach for it yourself. Yep. <laughs> we, we, we're not going to do any more work for you. Sorry. You go look this up. Go type this in, and it'll just take you to the thing. Um, yep. Well, that's cool, though. So it will. So if you follow the syntax uh, on the docs there, it'll actually spin in the, the actual value that it found. So you can, you can actually see this would be nice if more things where it's like, you're non compliant. Tell me why. Yep. What did you find? Yeah, being able to yep. put really verbose uh, text in here would be very useful. So now if we save that. And I definitely confirmed you can't edit in window once you've got yep. it. Yeah, I saw that. But that's nice. So that's already applied there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and sync our device through the portal. Or, uh, Here's what's cool right here. You can hit resync here. Though I I think we have to probably pull down policy. Do you think? Or do you yeah, think it will check? Go. That sync will, will do. You think this policy. sync will pull that policy yeah. down? Because what it's doing is checking device settings. What we should say is this should expand and add an additional one there. All right. Should very much being the operative. Um, but as we all know, it takes time for this to process. And while we do that, Adam's going to increase the resolution of this device. Nope. <laughs> it's already question. It's not going to like me. No, nope, it does not. Just imagine that you could the words on this screen. Sorry. Actually, we can just do this, Steve. We have the technology. Window. Look at that. Magic. We care about you, the viewer, as we sit Correct. in silence waiting for this. It'll get there. So what I'm going to do on the back end is I'm obviously going to be mashing the, uh, the sync button. <laughs> nice. Uh, and, and what we're going to check is to make sure that the device will come through and port the policy. If you've, uh, if you've ever been, if you haven't watched other videos and you don't know this, uh, I'm not going into that one. Uh, 
I was confused for a moment. I said, oh, well, you know, it'd be nice to have CM Trace on here. And then I saw that folder. And said, no, 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 it's not going to be in there. <laughs> uh, okay. Without CM Trace, uh, yeah, this is what you get. But uh, you can go watch the Intune Management Extension log, and you can watch it do things. Uh, yep. And see what's going on. It's the one where would we see the compliance stuff in here? Or is it going to be in the executor? Uh, I would Actually, assume that'll be sensor log in the executor. Would be my assumption. It definitely won't be in the IME. It won't be in this. It won't be in this log because that's for other stuff. It's for like usage track. I actually think it would be in the uh, event viewer, not in actual log files. That's a good guess too. Watch Adam mistype everything. You drive next time, Chief. Yeah, I know. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the company portal and see if it's synced through. Look at that! Just checking. So if you hit check access. So let's see. Think, to do, do, do you think the docs will tell us? Uh, it, no, yeah. uh, it's under application. They're going to tell you how to do stuff in the in the portal. In the portal. <laughs> Giving this machine a run for its money, it looks like. Yep. Watch Adam's lab struggle. Once again, you can absolutely spin up your own lab for the next demo, Steve. Oh, I will. Yeah, you will. And then we'll watch you. Yeah. Okay. Keep it civilized. Keep it civilized. <laughs> I don't know if that's what the people want. They don't want us to keep civilized? Yeah. Put some put some questions in the comments. Tell us what you want. Answers, whatever. <laughs> Battle Royale wins and how. Exactly. Oh, look, there we, status, there we go. The logger, CSP, provisioning status. So we got some things going. Well, we're still, still just checking access. I don't know. Still not liking this. They'll get there. I'm confident. If we hit home, there you go. Encryption needed. Mm. So if we go back. Just click off and then click back onto home. Just close, close this. Out. Yep. That's weird. Check that out. They have, oh, two seconds. Like right, it had zero recommendations. I was like, wow, that's amazing. It's like yes, it's impossible. It was thinking. Oh, and. To be clear, if you haven't been along for the ride, we customized the portal go and made it red, so we know that we customized it. It's not a it's not a, a function of us being non-compliant or anything. No. Still checking. I could probably get to a lot of company data. Yeah. <laughs> now and the time it's going to yes. tell us that we're non-compliant. It will get there, though. What's it doing at this point? It's still saying it's not evaluated on the platform. Well, John. We can see uh, it did fail you, the encryption, though. Do you have a DVD drive attached or DVD ISO attached to your VM? Oh, no, you wouldn't. For BitLocker to... Yeah. Because BitLocker will fail if no. you've got a... Um, no, I, I disconnect. ISO attached. I generally disconnect before I snapshot. Okay. Uh, refresh and go all the way to the top. Cure. Cool. 
Damn, it knows it's not compliant from a good luck. There it is. Hey, check it out. Encrypt your device. Because it hasn't successfully contacted the it service hasn't picked it up yet. It's all the same. Yeah, it hasn't picked it up so yet. So that's the so question I had about. I've the... been mashing the policy on the back end. Maybe that's why it's been going slow. You're sabotaging me, Steve. No. Okay. Give it a restart. The machine? Yep. Because it forces a full um, policy sync. I mean, if I must. Don't have to. Sorry, I'm looking for something real fast. That's okay. I understand. Uh, well, I don't know. I see him trace laying around somewhere. Machine. Whatever. Okay, so this is that part where you cut out a whole section. and Not at all. We're not going to be cutting it out. <laughs> Fine. All right. Well, fast forward past this part. If you're tired of waiting, we'll get there eventually. We promise. That's right. Device compliance is fun. Does it not auto reconnect? Well, it does, but it gets annoying. Okay. Because when you're in enhanced session, it kind of reconnect and tell you you're not. Oh yes. It keeps saying you're not here yet. You're not here yet, and it's just. It's yep. 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 Oh, which means, oh, but then that does mean I have to reach your mom. Mm -hmm. It's all good. We're just a little bit rusty, folks. Yep, we are indeed. It has been a minute. You got our avatars remade with a little gray in our beards. Speak for yourself. I have no gray <laughs> right now. You have no hair right now. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, but I have no gray. Uh, Someone needs to put together a montage, you know, co collaboration video of just all the different Steve hairstyles. Short hair, long beard, long beard, short hair. Same. Yep. Ooh, doing something. No idea what that was all about. I blame Ben. He's obviously got a script running. Probably. Checked one minute ago. Who knows? Well, we'll get there. Steve, should yes. we go look at the compliance reports or should we wait until it's not on so that we have something no. to look at? Wait until it's up because reports don't have anything in there right now. Oh, that's kind of sad. I mean, this is like our only one machine in the whole tenant, I think. Pretty much. The only one that's semi healthy. Look at this. What I found. You found Sam Trace. What? It was only one of the 40 places I've got it stashed. Well, it's actually on the device somewhere, too. Not on this device. Yeah, it is because it's been deployed. Why would it be deployed on this device? Because we had a intern go and deploy it to all devices when really yeah okay where do you put it i don't know where it is uh, i don't either all right All I know is there's an application. He didn't uh, register it into anything. No, of course not. Why would you do that? So you don't have to do this. <laughs> where is it? I don't know where it's at. Ben, 
when you're watching this, tell us where you actually dropped the CM trace file. He didn't put it where I normally put it. I do the sim link to it. So we, the symbolic link, you ever do that? That's the yeah. best way to do it. I think I stole that one from Terrell. So you install a config manager client, and then you do a sim link to make it think that it's in system 32. And then you don't register it in the path, and it just, <laughs> you type in CM trace anywhere you're at, and it just knows it's there. Amazing. That makes logic. Still checking. This is fun. Yeah, it's a great video. You should just like relay that's like still not there yet. And just so when people are scrolling past, they know when to stop. <sighs> or we'll put it in timestamp or something. Like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, perfect. Love it. Is your log on fail? Uh, hey, while we're here, if you're watching, uh, I just discovered this one the other day. So, um, you know, Config Manager has a log for everything, and yes, and and Intune has decided, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's just put it all in one and make it roll really rapidly. So you you gotta kind of look at it when the thing happens, or else you don't get it. Um, anyway. Uh, I found out that you could do this. And so if you want to see all the logs related to a specific service or handler or whatever, for the things that they've added these tags on, you can just filter, at least in CMEs, another reason to use it. Um, it's kind of cool. That's very cool. You know what? I may use that as a tip and trick at MMS. You should. If we're not doing it in training live. Time again. Yeah. That's still to be determined, isn't it? I guess. It didn't work. Did not. Uh, equal to. There we go. This is kind of neat. If only I knew what those you know, tags meant. Yes. I'm sure if we were to get Ben on, he'd tell us. Ben would have a code or some kind of script that would auto translate it into human readable things or something. Yep. All right. So, still think it has worked. What's in the event log? Uh, event log. What's that all about? Uh, there's an issue with DNS and DHCP when trying to go. Just to try to check and see if we can get to this. Okay. Thing. So there's a problem with your internet there, Adam. Nope, I've seen this on other machines too. <laughs> Not willing to take the bait. Uh, no, it's always either Microsoft's fault or security's fault. Well, yeah, it's always security's fault. Always. Always, 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 because they push something special. This really is fun. I could restart the computer from here. Restart it? Yeah. What do we need to restart it again for? Because I can't. Real world scenario going on here. What are we supposed to do? Yeah. Just start randomly restarting customer computers. It's not going to be a problem. Sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure if we look through here, there will actually be the script that's being executed. Oh, I have a thought. Okay. You're going to look at the PowerShell script. We probably don't have it. Have a... Uh, what do you call it? Enabled. Enabled. No. Why is it not even? Is that the same thing? It is. Got there. There we go. So this is neat. This is why you don't put secrets in your code. Yes. Because this is what happens. And more to the point, this is why you don't enable this. Capture these these log files into your central seam 
because you can inadvertently get a whole heap of secrets that have high level of access. Look at that. What I don't that know what that is. Be. Well, it's all over the place. Keeps let's, doing things. Let's refresh, Adam, because there's just a script that's just run in there. Hey, look, we have a detection script for health. Yep. Ah, it is an IME cache. Yeah. If you go back in there, you'll see there's the IME cache. I'm telling you, this is running as a it's it's, running it's a proactive IME. it's a proactive remediation script. But proactive remediation doesn't use IME. It puts them in the IME cache. It absolutely oh. does. I've been watching oh, it yeah. all week. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you have. Yeah. Check it out. So your detection and remediation scripts all show up here. Are as they ours? Hey, don't um, click on that. Go in there. Yeah, it's one of ours. We're looking for. You right -click something, edit. Steve. No, no, no. Right click no. edit. Right click ah, edit. No. no. I want to see it. I want to show you how you can. I'm going to show you how we can know what it is before points. we before we do it. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Share screen. Welcome to Intune Training, the place where Steve winds up, Adam. <laughs> Where we argue about stupid things. Um, okay, let me figure out how to get back here. So, uh, what's neat is see how our uh, let's, let's okay. So our configuration policy has a nine one, but let's go look at our appliance policies. Go look at our script that we made. I think it's got an ID. See that ID? Watch. Mm -hmm. Be amazed. It's the same one over there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. You need to look at that. Right. Yeah. In theory, that would work if. Can you see, can you see it? It's, it's quite small. Oh, well, I got to reshare that screen. Yeah. But hold on. While I'm be before I go down. Better remediate script. No, no, no. Hold on. Stand by a minute. Uh, I have a guess at what's going to be in the remediate. I bet you can guess what it is, too. It's going to be, it should be, but, yeah. but, but check this out. So if <laughs> you want to look in that folder location and see if you see if uh, your proactive remediations have made it down, all of your health scripts, all of our active remediation scripts will end up in the health scripts folder in the IME cache. And the GUI listed here will go on uh, to the ID of the script that you see here. In your URL yep. version is the under at the end of the script. Makes sense. So, yeah, it's kind of neat. So, back nice. to this. Let's reconnect to the VM. For the Got show. it. Please. Got it. Stand by. Because we're a well oiled machine here. Hey, we're getting it done. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Ages. Okay, now um, we have to copy these out because we're not going to be able to see them inside of there typically. There's your same trace. Or did you put that there? No, I put it there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's our detection script. Huh. Look Perfect. familiar? Yeah. yeah. What's our right. radiation? Got the JSON nothing. file in it. It's going to be nothing. Oh, it's empty. That is not that is not what I expected. I mean, it's not remediating, but I I I, I was no. sipping, thinking that it was going to process the compliance locally, where it would send the JSON file in as part of like maybe they had a cool wrapper no. that they just would use and send it down locally and have it processed. Because remediate means here. it's going to make change. Yeah, I mean, I get that. Cool. So if we go back to company portal now, if we go home on that device. It should be saying non-compliant. No, it's still checking access because awesome. Yeah, awesome. But I bet we have. I reckon that script's actually going to stay there permanently. Uh-huh. For compliance reasons. I think until we rip it off, I think it stays there. Until you, t until you remove the compliance policy. Uh-huh. I think that's accurate. So they keep or you change status. it to a new version. Uh, so eventually this will process and return back what we're looking for. We have an error on the compliance. I mean, this was... Yeah, previous. that was old one. Sucks. 
so many clicks. No, look at that. It's here. Uh, Script. TPM present. That's what we're checking for. Uh, I, I version. I can only see the. Oh access. man! See, this is the this is me sharing the screen again. Here, hold on. There we go. Oh, no, it suddenly peeped. Go again. There we go. Perfect. Okay, sorry. So I was. Let me go back all the way back here. So you can drive. You can either drill in on the device or on the compliance policy. So if you're at the compliance policy itself. Um, yep. you can click on the compliance and you can see the total machines, etc. So they succeeded in assigning the policy, not the compliance information. This is just, we signed it. Um, you go to the device status. You can see that my auto patch machine, uh, has an error. If you drill in, now you're just back at this itself. So you got to drill back all the way into the device compliance. See that we failed here. So many clicks. Yep. But there we go. We were so chase on file, name. model name, TPM, BIOS version. All of them had issues. Now this one invalid data type for the discovered setting. So that's where JSON rule doesn't match what the output of the JSON. I mean of the because script is going to be. Our JSON result was coming back with. Uh, the UEFI was like, uh, if you have the JSON file, we'll just run that script again. I'm not running as admin. We'll see if this works. Probably it not. Should work. Here we go. Yep. So you'll see there it says Hyper V UEFI release version V 4.1. While it exceeds what you're expecting, you can't do maths on a string. And this is trying we, to do maths on a string right at the top. Right. You're saying it had to be a so the type was a version data type, so it had to be a four digit up to a four digit four four place, four position, major minor release build. Yeah. The, so if you look at the second line, it's op, uh greater equals. So it's saying it needs to be either two point three or higher. Um, so what now, it needs to do is modify your script to handle that as a text and convert it into string. Yeah, but I mean, you could potentially do that, or you can something where you target this specifically to specific models of this. So you'd have a compliance correct. policy for a different model based on... Uh, yeah, and you could just change it to is equals, and then you say this version, and you yep. do it that way. Yep. So I'm curious to see on the VM itself, has that come up saying... Uh, the device information. So if we I, mean, I would here, expect the alert here. It should give us the yeah. red exclamation. Oh. Ooh. That's that conditional access stepping in. Yeah, that, that, that that's conditional access saying you need to uh, MFA because we'll have one or No, but I mean, if it's marking me as non-compliant, is it? Re do we have a policy in place that's yeah. restricting me yet? Conditional access will be an uh, an or option, not an and option, or one of, I should say. So we cannot access company resources. And hey, there can. we go. Finally, and so only Inspiron supported. So if you hit more on the bottom one, and Bing. <laughs> absolutely i mean it's a sample data I'm about that's this. right you can you can put whatever you want but yeah um, oh hey this would be cool steve so i mean just you can send so you can send someone to anywhere from here so you could correct. point people to internal urls like let's say you had you, could, you had a, a, a training you could have an, a power or something that you could point somebody to to go and address some sort of compliancy thing that they're missing. Yep. Um, Correct. That's pretty neat. So one of the cool things as well is if you look at the BIOS version, BIOS version needs to upgrade to at least 2.3 value discovered was Hyper-V UEFI release V4.1. 
So it's actually giving you and usable information just even though it's out. That's pretty cool. It gives you all the info, even though it had an error. I like it. Yep. So this is really cool. It is, in my opinion, anyway. It really fast, except for yep. all the syncing involved. <laughs> Look, and, 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 and this is part of the uh, whole initial setup. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but once it's set up, it's quick. And yeah, I mean, ideally, like, so scenario is you got an autopilot box. Um, yeah. These scripts are going down during those syncs. I mean, we've Correct. talked about the scheduled tasks before, like when a machine autopilot goes and drops in all these scheduled tasks at a cer at certain intervals to refresh, refresh, refresh uh, every three minutes and then then does that for so long. And then so you're going to get this stuff down very, very quickly. And so. Now you may say, all right, well, if you go in and you set your, uh, the appliance, um, uh, grace, or not grace period, but what we were calling grace period. Um, if you set that to too Run short of a time, you may find that you get machines that never, that are not before they even get out of a reasonable sync cycle, you know, Hey, we it baked in, why am I clicking there? Uh, it hasn't baked in enough um by the time you get there and so you know you want to make sure that you're you're putting reasonable um compliance policy or a that's right schedule don't for your non-compliance action don't put it as a 120 days well, in our environment it very well could be 120 days before we touch the machine again so you yeah. know kind but of for intern training cool but in your environment yeah realistically you want to look at a day maximum uh unless your business requirements have extended time yeah so do testing validation uh in the environments that i work in we're looking at eight hours so 0 0.333 recurring all right and so sorry i clicked fast so i went monitor or de all, the devices node so let me start back i've collapsed things de device monitor this is where all you get all your uh, lots of your reports. Yep. Not with the reports node. It's <laughs> non-compliant devices. Uh, sorry, I'm taking a moment. It's it's late for Adam. Myself. It's all good. I'm just no no. I'm taking a moment to laugh at the and the monitor node. Yes. Um, so so see, if this we go, takes yeah, that goes in there. Go back just straight, straight into the device. Go. It doesn't give us anything. If you go setting compliance. Hold on. No, on the... no, I'm just and checking the, to the see. I was hoping that maybe period expiration is pretty cool too. Um, that you can report on and you can do some metrics around that as well in your environment. Um, but if we go to setting compliance, this is where it gets let's, really cool. Let's just click through all of them. Yeah. But this is where you can start pulling information around each of the settings. Yeah, you can um, summarize. So actually, this this is a great one. Um, before uh, I found out, which was just minutes ago, about that TPM uh, or the the BitLocker um, Windows Health, the health station health stuff. Health attestation. Yep. Uh, I came in here and I said, "Oh, all of my devices are non-compliant. There's something wrong with that setting. I should probably go turn that off." Um, yep. Didn't I? But uh, you know, you could definitely see, all right, I've got way too many machines that are non-compliant. What's going on? Um, so it's definitely really, really good. Yep. Uh, and then obviously you have the policy compliance, which is cool. We shouldn't have any devices in there. Because right, we policy have our, compliance. Our, we've got our one machine. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then non-compliant policies. That I think should pull back. Uh, yeah, to, Interesting. Uh, because we've got errors on that on that one, and that's why. Uh, and then that last one is that health attestation report. So this is if you have health attestation set up, then it would pull the So I think, yeah, so that's a good call out. If you just go here first, if you're not sure, go here first. If nothing's showing up here, probably don't. I, 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 I'll, I'll make it even easier. You probably don't have health attestation set up in your environment, and if you do, you know you do. Fair enough. Yeah, because um, somebody on purpose. Yeah, it's an intentional 
taking the time to set it up. It's a physical server or a, uh, there's a, an appliance in the back end nowadays for the on-cloud version. Uh, but, yeah, look, I think we did pretty well there, Adam. We got it done in less than an hour. I'm sad. I mean, it didn't really error out, um, but it seems like every time we do one of these demos, it takes a really long time for the sync to happen. Yes. Um, and I think it's because I'm maybe maybe you need our tenants in Australia, and I'm all the way over here. Let's not get in the internet discussion against Steve. I don't want to embarrass you in front of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this was really fun. Um, hopefully, everybody finds this useful. Um, Johannes, if you've made it, thanks for tipping us on this one. Um, he, Johannes, is the only person so far in Intune training this year that has come up with. <laughs> Ideas of topics for us to go. So uh, we stole this one from him. Uh, thanks, Johannes. This is a good call. Uh, more to come this year. Um, yep. Please like and subscribe and follow and all the things. Um, let us know what you want to hear, what to see. Uh, we always appreciate your, your feedback um, and all that stuff. Good seeing you, Steve. Likewise. Um, and make sure you uh, sign up to MMS. <laughs> Yeah, and nobody's gonna hear this part. No, that's we try this out. Yeah, we'll do it on the next one. All right, so, bye everybody. Thanks everyone. Bye.